every Friday night, Julia's job is to compare the grocery prices of our neighborhood stores for Saturday morning shopping. There are five big neighborhood markets within a couple of blocks of our house, and Julia spreads her shopping around, going where the prices are lowest and the quality best. Remember when a chocolate bar cost a quarter? When you could fill your car up for $5 and feed a family of six for $35 a week. Whatever happened to those days? Without anything tangible backing currencies, governments could borrow and print as much currency as it wanted. This has gradually led to the value of our currency being eroded. With the creation of all this money, that dilutes the value of all of the dollars that were out there before, so that the purchasing power of the dollar uh, gets crowded down, down, down. And we used to be able to buy a, a gallon of gas for, you know, 31 cents. Now it's hitting around $5. The average guy in the street is affected by inflation because of the loss of purchasing power. And as a consequence, his standard of living is declining if he can't keep up with the inflation rate. And many measures of a standard of living, Americans today are actually worse off. You can take my uh, grandparents. My grandmother never worked, despite the fact that my grandfather was a carpenter. And they had eight children. Uh, could a carpenter, somebody without even a high school diploma, just working in a blue collar job, support a wife and eight kids today? Not a, not a chance. With inflation rising faster than incomes, people were forced into more and more drastic measures to maintain their standard of living. With each new day, the work of a family begins again. When we went off gold backing of the dollar, what used to happen prior to that is the husband went to work, the wife stayed at home, raised the family. Because of inflation in the 70s, the wife went to work. So now you had two incomes that were necessary to produce and buy the same goods and services. In the 90s, we stopped saving. The savings rate basically got down to zero because people were spending, they couldn't save in order to buy the same goods and services. Then we got to the last decade, the wife was already working, the savings were down to zero, they borrowed money. And so we've gone from two earners getting rid of our savings rate, to borrowing money to keep pace with inflation. It's been dominated by coronavirus. The crisis has hit our society's heart in all kinds of ways. But it also presents an opportunity. It gives us a chance, once the virus is under control, to build back better. Build back better. Using green principles. Because green investment will not only help us move closer to our international climate and environmental goals, it will also make our economies more resilient to future shocks. The UN system must be made fit for purpose to deliver on the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda, which is the ultimate prevention agenda. Today, uh it's the beginning of uh, a global mobilization effort uh, to rally our forces behind this great reset initiative. This great reset initiative. The King of the Netherlands remains firmly committed to international cooperation. In fact, we have enshrined it in Article 90 of our Constitution, which states the government shall promote the development of the international legal order. In fact, we have enshrined it in Article 90 of our Constitution, which states the government shall promote the development of the international legal order. In short, we need a great reset. In short, we need a great reset. Um, the reset vraag, ja, helemaal eens. Um... Ik ben de minister die SDG's moet coördineren op nationaal niveau. Ik, ik ben lid van een, 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 een stroom van denkers bij, bij het World Economic Forum. So um, we have to prepare for a more angry world. And uh, how to prepare? Uh, it means to take the necessary action.
Now is the historical moment, the time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system for the need for the post-corona era. For the need for the post-corona era. We must not miss this unique window of opportunity. Certainly in an area like health, partnerships are absolutely important. And I think in some ways those partnerships validate the impact uh, that, that can be had. Nou, in eerste instantie denk, hebben we ons natuurlijk in een vroeg stadium meteen politiek, uh, politieke steun uitge, uitgesproken weer voor de WHO. Uh, politieke steun uitge, uitgesproken weer voor de WHO. Kijk, geen enkele organisatie is perfect. En in het kader van het coronavirus weten we ook niet welke, welke steken er zijn uh, uh, men heeft laten vallen. Of welke politieke druk men heeft moeten weerstaan of niet kunnen weerstaan. Thank you for this opportunity to uh, say a few words at this year's event uh, 201. Uh, the high level simulation exercise for pandemic preparedness and response. Hosted by uh, John Hopkins Center for Health Security, the World Economic Forum and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Now here we are, you know, we, we didn't simulate this, we didn't practice. And we, as we enter into this, we haven't practiced at all. Uh, laat ik sowieso al stellen dat uh, wat mij betreft de impact uh, van het virus natuurlijk vanaf het begin een multidisciplinaire en internationale aanpak vraagt. Er is geen andere oplossing. Maar dat we ons samen sterk maken voor een wereldorde die weer een tijd mee kan. Maar dat we ons samen sterk maken voor een wereldorde die weer een tijd mee kan. Voor onszelf en voor het collectief. After all, what country does not benefit from a stable and secure international environment? from free and fair world trade, from peace instead of armed conflict, from prosperity instead of poverty, from equality instead of inequality. The absolute equality exists in Soviet Union, quote unquote equality. Everybody is equal in, in dirt, except some people are more equal than the others in Politburo. Except some people are more equal than the others in Politburo. <laughs> and it's up to us, the leaders of the United Nations of the world, to carry this legacy forward and make the Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Climate Agreement a reality. The population is going to get so big that feeding everybody and maintaining the environment is going to be impossible. You know, huge change in the uh, mortality rates in developing countries, which then has this effect of reducing population growth. That's the this big benefit that then makes everything like education and nutrition a lot easier. Now the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. We could cut the number of children who die every year from about 9 million to half of that uh, if we have success on it. And the, the benefits there in terms of reducing sickness, reducing the population growth, reducing the population growth. Can we drop the number of children who die per year in half and get the reduction in sickness and population growth that comes with that? That is sort of front of mind all the time. These are all about saving lives. And the good news is that as you make those breakthroughs, the population growth in the country goes down. Well, certainly the uh, foundation that my wife and I have has found it extremely important to reach out to private organizations. Uh, a lot of those are partnerships with drug companies. I mean, and we're taking things that are, you know, genetically modified organisms and we're injecting them in little kids' arms. We just shoot them right into the vein. So. Are these vaccines safe? Well, the uh, the FDA not being pressured will look hard at that. The FDA is the gold standard of regulators uh, and their current guidance on this. If they stick with that, if they stick with that is is very, very appropriate. Uh, but the bill, bill the, the data showed that everybody with a high dose had a, a side effect. 
Yeah, but some of that is, is not dramatic where, you know, it's just, you know, super painful. They deserve to get this vaccine first. And from there, you want to do tiering in various countries to make sure your most vulnerable populations get it. Uh, in, in our country, that would be blacks and Native Americans, blacks and Native Americans. I'm delighted to announce the Netherlands commitment of 325 million euros to Gavi between 2021 and 2030. So we have to think how we can create a better equilibrium, for example, through new tax systems, uh, through incentives, and particularly through uh, education, reskilling and upskilling uh, to prepare the people for the skills which are needed tomorrow. Dit doen we samen en Nederland als geen ander, samen met de universiteiten, is eigenlijk de belichaming van SDG 17. Klimaatverandering is de grootste bedreiging wereldwijd. Onze molens waren de motor van een nieuw land. Dan kunnen onze windmolens toch ook de motor worden van een nieuwe wereld. Alleen met een nieuwe economie zullen we floreren in een tijd van technologische en industriële revolutie. The fourth industrial revolution will impact our lives completely. It will not only change how we communicate, how we produce, how we consume, it will change actually us, our own identity. And of course gives life uh, to such uh, policies and uh, developments like uh, smart traffic, smart government, smart cities. What we will see is that uh, everything will be integrated into a ecosystem driven by big data and this revolution will come at a breathtaking speed. It will be like a tsunami. So, again, sadly, the richer countries that do contain the epidemic will not allow people from those countries to come in, you know, unless they are quarantined or tested or, or prove they're immune. The richer countries that do contain the epidemic will not allow people from those countries to come in, you know, unless they are quarantined or tested or, or prove they're immune. In future, voice connecti connectivity will be in every room and almost every object. Your, your mattress will monitor your nightmares. Your fridge will beep for more cheese. Your front door will sweep wide the moment you approach like some silent butler and every one of them minutely transcribing your every habit in tiny electronic shorthand stored, not in their chips or in their innards, nowhere you can find it, but in some great cloud of data that lowers ever more oppressively over the human race. Thank you very much for joining this important Great Reset Initiative Lounge. This important Great Reset Initiative Lounge. You know I love my country, and I'm not one to complain. But there's a lot of us that feel like we've been left stranded here. <laughs>